The Grandia series is one of those JRPG franchises that are currently dead. We haven't heard anything from it since quite a while, so it's time for us to know what the hell happened to Grandia. I have here with me Grandia 3, Grandia 2, and Grandia 1. All great games, so many good memories. So, let's begin! Grandia was a series of JRPGs developed by a studio called Game Arts. This studio was created by brothers Takeshi and Yoichi Miyagi back in 1985 who were mostly making computer software back then. Their first video game was an arcade run and gun called Thexter for PC which was later ported to the NES. Their second game was the cold classic Silphid another shooter originally released for PC and later ported to several other consoles as well. But their first RPG was Cellyard, a game that combined action and platforming elements also released for PC. So at first this company was doing ok until they released another platformer, now for the Sega Genesis, called Alicia Dragoon. Even though it initially failed due to lack of good marketing, it was a success and it is considered nowadays as a cult classic. Then, a few months later, Game Arts released yet another cult classic and one of the most memorable RPGs from the 90s. Lunar the Silver Star, released for the Sega CD in 1992, which was critically acclaimed and met with commercial success. Five years later, in 1997, they released the first Grandia for the Sega Saturn, ported to the PS1 for the rest of the world two years later. It was also a successful game and it also became a cult classic many years afterwards. So, with two successful new RPG franchises that spawned more titles for several different consoles later on, what exactly happened to them? Why did these two franchises fail? What the hell happened to Grandia? The first Grandia game was released exclusively in Japan for a console that never did very well in the rest of the world. This was published by ESP Software, then it was ported to the PS1 by Sony in North America and by Ubisoft in Europe. A spin-off called Grandia Digital Museum, also for the Saturn and also exclusively for Japan, was released in 1998. It was an extension of the first Grandia. The second Grandia game was originally released for the Sega Dreamcast in the year 2000, now published by Ubisoft outside Japan. It was a commercial success. During that same year and around the same release date, there was yet another spin-off called Grandia Parallel Trippers for the Game Boy Color, published by Hudson Soft this time, and guess what? It was an exclusive for Japan. Then they decided to port Grandia 2 to the PlayStation 2 with the help of a studio called Rocket Studio, now published by Enix in Japan, but still published by its Ubisoft everywhere else. This port, sadly, was a failure. It had a lot of problems like lag, glitches and bugs, and it later became one of the most infamous RPGs of all time, but despite that, it was pretty well received and fans with the PS2 were grateful that they now had the second game in a Sony console. The same year, 2002, they released another spin-off, but finally one that we all got, Grandia Extreme for the PS2. It was a good game, really, despite having somewhat failed in the market. And guess who published it? Ubisoft? No, Enix? Again. Now for the entire planet. So, having met with mixed to negative criticism because nobody told the world that this was a spin-off and not a grand main title, the series began meeting a downfall, sadly. In 2006, the world met Grandia 3, now published by Square Enix. And even though it was technically still published by the same people, Enix, it was once again under a different name. 
Since Sega consoles had died after the Dreamcast, there was only the option to publish the game for the PlayStation 2, the Xbox and the Nintendo GameCube. The PS2 was the best choice since previous titles had been released for Sony consoles as well. Initially, Grandia 3 was a commercial success and it was well received everywhere around the world, but time went on and more and more people began criticizing it. Nevertheless, Square Enix was happy to have made the right decision and maybe, just maybe, the Grandia series had a future. Had, yes, because then a very heartbroken tragedy occurred that contributed into leading the franchise to its demise. Takeshi Miyagi, one of the co-founders of Green Arts, died at age 45 of a brain tumor in July 29, 2011. Even though having left Game Arts right after Grandia 2's original release for the Dreamcast, it still hit his older brother pretty hard. Grandia had been a franchise almost entirely developed by Takeshi. So, how will Joichi continue this on his own? He did Grandia 3 after all, but was that game really successful? The truth is, not really. Like I said, many websites began trashing the game with strong criticism mainly focusing on the poorly written story and the mediocrity of everything else. And I'm not even going to comment on that terrible J-pop song for the opening theme that they also criticized. Was this because Takashi wasn't involved? Was this because now Square Enix was involved? But alas, Grandia didn't die just yet. They made one last attempt to keep the series alive, and that was Grandia Online. All those MMORPGs out there were kicking ass, but Grandia sure wasn't. So why not? An online game? Since the franchise allegedly has so many fans, it's a prequel to the original Grandia, so it's gonna be a huge success, right? Sure, let's release it only in Japan. Uh, it came out in July 2009, and it went okay at first before a complete absolute, masterful, disgraceful, abominable, atrocious... Okay, I'm exaggerating. The game failed, even though it lasted for three consecutive years until finally shutting down in 2012. I tried to investigate more into this, but there's barely any information about it on the internet. If you guys know something more in-depth about this mystery, feel free to use the comment section below. In any case, Grandia was apparently death. So many changes within their history, so many publishers involved, so many other projects interfering, so many only in Japan bullshit. If the series was so successful, why couldn't they release everything else here? In other words, and like many other cases, the series went into the deep slumber because of bad decisions. Will it return one day? Well, they haven't said anything since their atrocious failure with Grandi Online and the strong criticism against Grandia 3. It's been over 10 years since the last console release and 6 since they shut down the Grandia Online servers. But it's not as if the franchise's reputation was badly damaged or as if many of the key members including Joichi died after his brother, so maybe someday we'll see another game? Who knows? But what we do know so far is what the hell happened to Grandia. Hey guys, that's it. That's what, in my opinion, happened to Grandia. It's so sad because it was such a great franchise and it had a lot of potential. So let us hope one day we'll see another new Grandia, even if it's just by Yuichi and company. I mean, they already did Grandia 3 and, in my opinion, it was great. So why not? We all want a new Grandia. We're waiting for this great franchise to come back. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna leave a post uh, in, the, in the description, it's a link to my website, to a post that I recently made in which I show you 10 ways in which you can support my channel for absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything to support me. That's great, isn't it? So take a look at that post, please, and see you next time.